Yum, yum! Hey, this is Ed Ferrari, and in this video, I'm going to make a wedge of Swiss cheese using Mesh Fusion in Moto 10.2. Now, this little project is designed to further familiarize us with the Mesh Fusion process. And I'm not going to be using any custom meshes. Instead, I'll be using some of the cubic meshes that ship with Moto 10.2. So, this should be pretty easy for anyone to follow along if you choose to do so. The first thing I'm going to do is delete the existing cheese wedge mesh item in the item list so that we can start over from scratch. So I'm going to come over to the Fusion Vertical tab, and in the Fusion Meshes section, I'm going to click on the Cubic Geometry button. That brings up the Fusion Cubic Preset Browser, but it doesn't take us directly to the Cubics, so I'm going to have to do some manual navigation. I'll double click on the Fusion Assets folder, and then I'll double click on the Fusion Meshes folder. And then finally, I'll double click on the Cubics folder. Now, these Cubics are all quad, all Catmull Clark meshes that are tailor made for working with Mesh Fusion. And of course, you can use your own meshes if you'd like. But I'm just going to double click on this Q Barrel 1 mesh. And at the moment, I can't see the wireframe, so I'm going to hold Control 1 to bring up this Pi menu. And I'll choose the rightmost option, which is Toggle Wireframe. And then I'll press 2 to enter Edges mode. And I'm going to double click this edge to select this edge loop. And then I'll hold shift and double click this edge to select this edge loop. And then I'll remove these edges by holding control with X to cut them away. Now I'd like to scale this barrel so that it's a little bit shorter. So I'll hold R to bring up the scale tool. And I can either select this green handle and just pull that down, or I can come over to the transform tool options and just type in 25% in the Y input box, and then spacebar to drop the tool. Now this is going to be our cheese wheel, and we're going to use other meshes to trim away from this wheel so that we get a wedge shape. So I'm just going to rename this mesh item to cheese underscore wheel. I'm going to press 5 to go into items mode, and with this cheese wheel selected, I'm going to return to the fusion vertical tab, and I'm going to click on the topmost button, which is new fusion. That brings up this popover, and I'm going to give this new fusion a name. I'll call it Swiss underscore cheese. And I'm going to leave absolute strip width checked. If that's unchecked, you'll notice that the strip width uh, becomes a percentage. And if absolute strip width is checked, it turns to millimeters. So I like to work with absolute strip widths. It's the default, so I'll just leave that checked. And I'll click on new fusion with selected meshes. And then I'll unpin the popover. So now we have a fusion item in our item list, and it's called Swiss cheese. And if I make that invisible, our cheese wheel is still visible, but we can't see the surface because it's tied to the fusion item. However, we can see the wireframe, which is colored green, and that green color corresponds to the green highlight in the item list. And the color green in Mesh Fusion means primary, and primary is a positive or additive uh, fusion operation. So I'll make this fusion item visible again. And now we're going to create some negative source meshes. And I'm going to use the cubics to do that. So I'll come over to the cubic geometry preset browser, and I'm going to look for a cube. So I'll just choose this Q medium cube. And then I'll select it in polygons mode. So I'll press 3, R for scale. And then I'm just going to scale this in the X and Z. So I'm just grabbing that green circle and scaling it up. Now I'll press W for move. And I'm just going to move it in the X so that it covers about half the cheese wheel to about there. Now I want to get a, a top view. So let me hold control space bar to bring up my viewport pie menu. And I'll just choose top. I'll press Alt W to change the action center to origin. E for rotate. And then holding control, I'm going to rotate this in the Y axis. And by holding control, I just snap the rotation to 15 degree increments. And that's all I want is 15 degrees. So spacebar to drop the tool. I'm going to return to uh, items mode by pressing 5. And I want to mirror this uh, cube item. And it will actually duplicate the cube item because I'm in items mode. So I'll press Shift V to mirror. And then I'll click in the viewport. And then I'm going to drag this uh, original cube above the duplicate. 
And I'm actually going to select both cubes and then just move them in items mode in the Z, just to make the wedge a little bit larger. Spacebar to drop the tool, control spacebar to go to my viewport pie menu and I'll choose perspective. Now these two cubes are still just regular mesh items and I want them to become fusion source items. I want these two cubes to actually trim away at the cheese wheel. So there's a few ways we can do this, but I'll just go over two easy ones. Uh, if I select this medium cube and then left mouse button click and drag it onto the cheese wheel, I'll get this menu and I can choose fusion, apply subtraction. And you'll notice that that cube now becomes invisible, but it has a magenta wireframe and it's actually trimming away at the cheese wheel. And I can do the same thing with this other cube. So I select the cube in items mode, left mouse button click and drag it onto the cheese wheel, which is the primary. And then I choose fusion, apply subtraction from the menu. And that subtracts the other cube from the cheese wheel. And now we have a wedge. Now, if we want to do this a different way, I'll just control Z or command Z to undo those operations. I can also select both of these cubes and then shift select the cheese wheel. And then I can come over to the fusion vertical tab and I can choose this first icon underneath set mesh roll and apply. And I can just click that. And that does the same thing. Now, if I want to see the wedge or the fusion item without having these wireframes in the way, I can hold control F to bring up the fusion pie menu. And I can choose the rightmost option, which is toggle source visibility. And now I'm just looking at the wedge by itself. So I'd like to address this corner here, which looks a little bit uh, kind of jagged and not ideal. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, update this, the strip items because right now I can't select the strip items. So I have to come over to the fusion item and with it selected, I can come over to the fusion strips in the fusion vertical tab and I can click update strip items. And by doing that, you'll notice I can now kind of pre-select all of these strips. By left mouse button clicking on a strip, I get this fusion strips popover, which I can pin. And then I'm going to select all strips. And I think I'm going to change the strip width to three millimeters. And I'm going to work on the corner here. So I'll expand this strip corners uh, section here. And I'm going to focus on this checkbox here next to adjust density and these this row of buttons here, these kind of blue green uh, buttons that start off as a square and then kind of uh, all the way to the right we have a circle. So if I change this uh, adjust density input box to 30 and then check the box and I choose this rightmost button, you'll see that the corners are now completely round. If I choose the leftmost option, which is the square, they become completely sharp. But I like to keep the density pretty low, so I'll change this to 5%. And let me try the, the round option, which is all the way to the right. Okay, that's a little bit too round. So let me try the second from the left, this button right here. And that's more reasonable. That's pretty round, it's not too sharp, but it's not, uh, it's not too round. So spacebar to drop those strips, and then I'll temporarily unpin this fusion strips popover. And now what I'd like to do is work on the holes that give the Swiss cheese its signature look. So I'm going to use the mesh paint option in the duplicate vertical tab, but first I need some, uh, I need a mesh to actually paint onto this to create the holes. And I'm going to choose a basic sphere. So I'll get that from the cubic geometry. So once again, I'll open up the preset browser and I'll choose the Q sphere, so I'll double click that. It comes in a little bit big, so in polygons mode, I'll just scale this down a little bit. Now I'll just make that invisible because I don't need to see it. And I need a surface for the mesh paint tool to adhere to. And at the moment, if I try to select the polygons of this fusion item, I can't because a live fusion item doesn't allow you to select the polygons. So I'm going to output this fusion item to actual geometry. 
So in the properties of the Fusion item, I'm going to change the mesh mode from Draft to Airtight Final, and then I'm going to click Dupe and Convert to Mesh. And I'll just give this a name. I'll call it Temp, because this is just a temporary mesh. And then I'll click Create Mesh. And then in the item list, I'm going to change the color to yellow, just so I know that it's temporary. So now I can select these polygons with no problem. So again, I'm in the Duplicate Vertical tab, and I'm going to click on Mesh Paint. And then I'm going to make sure that my paint mode is set to Drop. That's important. And then the source is going to be a specific mesh, and the mesh item is going to be the Q sphere. So now when I left mouse button click and start dragging, I can paint that Q sphere onto the surface, which is this temp uh, mesh item. So now I'm just going to start painting out uh, these spheres onto the surface of our wedge. And these spheres are actually going to be uh, negative elements. We're going to subtract this from the uh, cheese wheel. Now that the spheres have been painted onto the surface of the wedge, I'm going to separate them into two different mesh items. And the reason we need two different mesh items is because of the spheres that overlap, such as these right here. The geometry that overlaps or intersects will not give satisfying results when used as a subtractive trim, so it's best to split the geo into different mesh items. So the first thing I'm going to do is press N twice to create two mesh items. The first mesh item I'll name holes underscore zero one, and the second mesh item I'll name holes underscore zero two. So back in this temp mesh item, I'm going to select each of the uh, spheres that are part of an overlapping pair. So any of the spheres that overlap, I'm going to remove one of the spheres from that pair. So there's a few, there should be one or two more. And I think that does it. So I'm going to press Control or Command X to cut those away, and I'll paste them into holes underscore zero two. And then I'll temporarily hide that mesh item. And now I'm going to take all of the other spheres and put them into holes underscore zero one mesh item. So I'll select the wedge, and then I'll press the open square bracket key to select the inverse and then Command or Control X to cut the spheres away, and then Control V to paste them into the holes underscore zero one. Now I no longer need the temporary mesh item, so I can just delete that, and I also no longer need the original Q sphere mesh item, so I can delete that. Now I'm going to move the holes one and holes two above the fusion item, and I'm going to make the fusion item visible along with the cheese wheel mesh item. Now I'll press 5 to go into items mode, and I'm going to select holes underscore zero 01, and I'm going to left mouse button click and drag that onto the green wireframe of cheese wheel. And it looks like I accidentally uh, selected the strip, so let me do that again. I'll left click on holes underscore zero 01 and drop that onto cheese wheel. And I'll select fusion apply subtraction. Now this could take a couple seconds, but there we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to use the alternate method with these uh, second holes. I can either, I could do the same thing and just drag these onto the cheese wheel, but I'm going to select holes underscore zero two, shift select the cheese wheel, and then I'll choose this button right here underneath set mesh roll and apply. And it's like doing the same thing. It's just subtracting the holes from the cheese wheel. Okay, now I'll make the fusion source items invisible by holding Control F to bring up the fusion pie menu, and I'll choose the rightmost option, which is toggle source visibility. And that looks pretty good. So again, uh, I'm noticing some problems with the strips. 
because we added more fusion sources, we have to update the strips again. So with only one fusion item, you don't have to select the uh, fusion item itself before you update the strip items, but you could select it. It doesn't really make a difference. So I'll click on update strip items. If you have more than one fusion item, then you have to select the fusion item that you want to update. Um, in this case, as I mentioned, it doesn't really matter. So there we go, now all the strips are updated. So I'll just select one of the strips. That brings up this fusion strips popover. I'll pin that and select all the strips. And I'm just going to change the strip widths in the fusion strip properties. So three millimeters, we'll just keep that nice and uniform. And I'm also going to adjust the corners because we're getting a little bit of a point there. And then we have corners like right here where the holes kind of intersect. So I'm going to expose the strip corners. I'll adjust the density. I'll keep that at 5%. And I'm going to choose the left, uh, the second box from the left. There we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'll unpin the fusion strips popover. And I think I'm going to output this. So I'll select the fusion item. I already have the mesh mode set to airtight final. I'm just going to click dupe and convert to mesh. And I'll just call this cheese. And I'll click create mesh. Then I'll change the color of that mesh item to blue and I'll drag that underneath the fusion item. I'm going to press M to add a material. And I'll just call this new underscore cheese. And I'll give this a uh, kind of a yellowish color. There we go. I'll go over to the layout tab. There we go. And I'll go into the laminates, and I think I'll choose this laminate right here. So I'll just drag that right onto the mesh. And aside from looking a little bit like plastic, I, uh, I like the color of this. So now I'll go over to the render tab, and I'll press the triangle to start a render, a preview render. Straight away, it doesn't look half bad. I think what I'd like to do is go into the laminate material and I'll go into the material transmissive side tab. And this might be breaking a little bit of a rule by increasing the subsurface amount, but I'm going to do it anyway just because I think it looks a little bit better. I'll give this a 25% amount. I'll change the subsurface color just a little bit. And then I'll change the scattering distance to 15 millimeters. So that looks okay. It's a little bit dark on this side. I could actually increase the subsurface scattering a little bit, but for this demonstration, this was just to go over some mesh fusion tools. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Yum, yum!